Many years ago, as a paramedic on an ambulance in the Houston area, I got called to a chemical plant where a worker had gone into a tank and was overcome by poisonous fumes. Now, it was kind of frustrating because when I got there, the opening of the tank was small and I couldn't get the breathing gear on and make it through. So from above, about 10 feet above, I looked down with a hook and, and lassoed the guy's arm and eventually got him out. But it was kind of frustrating to watch the guy's life slowly slip away. Now, I could have gone in without the breathing gear and possibly got him out. But I felt I'd be setting a bad example for my students. I taught EMS classes back then. And risking your life is really not a good thing for EMTs to do, especially on a daily basis. So, I, I years later, I think I look back and, and I... I just wonder if I could have got him out and look upon it as a frustrating experience. In this video, we'll look at some of the emotional problems that can result from being around deadly incidents. And remember, if you missed the first EMT lesson and quiz, you can find it on the web through a Google search. Or go to my EMS webpage, which is not only lessons, but news and opinion. There are also some free quizzes, that you, links that you can find. Look for the links. In the first video, we looked at the EMS system, which consists of the hospitals, ambulance organizations, and trained ambulance crew members. The medical director helps set up protocols and standing orders, and a process for ensuring quality care is administered. When I was an EMS administrator, I worked with a physician medical director in looking at emergency call documentation to ensure that crew members did in the field what was consistent with our protocols for how care must be administered. The EMS system also has a public component that brings in the community by offering training, CPR classes, and information to promote emergency care. There are four levels of training nationwide. First responders are generally the first on the scene and can perform patient assessment and stabilize the patient until others arrive. The EMT basic learns all the skills of the first responder, but in a little bit more detail. The EMT basic learns how to administer epinephrine and inhaled medication in instances of emergencies. The EMT Intermediate has all the skills of the EMT Basic, but also learns how to initiate an IV and place an endotracheal tube into a patient. Finally, the EMT Paramedic, with all the basic skills, IV therapy, and advanced airway, can also interpret EKGs and administer a variety of emergency medications. And remember the National Registry, the organization that helps ensure quality standards for certification. This video will look at the well-being of the EMT basic. We'll cover the emotional aspects of emergency care, stress management, introduce you to incident stress debriefing, CISD, scene safety, body substance isolation, or BSI, personal protection equipment, PPE, and safety precautions that can be taken. And remember, you can Google the first lesson or go to my EMT class site for news and other lessons. EMTs face mental and emotional problems by being called from sleep to deal with a major crisis. And this can lead to chemical dependency, sleep disorders, irritability, and chronic fatigue. The way EMS people should deal with a major emergency involving deaths is Critical Incident Stress Debriefing, or CISD. This is usually done 24 to 72 hours after the incident. Debriefing is a specific technique designed to assist EMTs deal with the physical or psychological symptoms associated with the event by processing the event and reflecting on its impact. Diffusing, another component of CISD, allows the EMT to ventilate emotions associated with the crisis event. 
debriefing and diffusing should be provided as soon as possible. Body Substance Isolation, or BSI, is similar to universal precautions, and it involves isolating all body fluids such as blood, vomit, amniotic fluid and feces, and airborne pathogens. These pathogens can infect EMTs with the HIV virus and other diseases. EMTs will be exposed to tuberculosis, mumps, influenza, and MRSA. And they should protect themselves with hospital gowns, medical gloves, masks, and safety glasses. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, requires all EMTs to wear devices to protect eyes, mouth, nose, and respiratory systems from diseases through safety devices, or PPE, Personal Protective Equipment. If you plan on working on EMS, your personal safety must be a top priority. So protect yourself from a world of deadly pathogens and deal with stress through critical incident stress debriefing.